I've been given the, uh, the good opportunity to preach to the choir here because uh, I'm not so much going to talk just about embracing EPUB 3, but I'm going to talk about embracing standards and structure if you're a publisher, if you're a writer, if you're in the production business, how that's so important to you and what you're trying to do in your business. And so my clicker isn't working. Ah. So one thing we all know, of course, times are changing. We, we started out in this business doing things by hand. We made the movable type. We made the movable type go faster. We made it go even faster and faster. And we discovered how to distribute it on PCs. We're moving it into first the Kindles, the iPads, and who knows what's next. So certainly nothing is simple anymore. We're all looking to place our content in multiple distribution channels. The challenge is big. Uh, most of the publishers that we deal with have numerous um, EPUB, mobile, you name it, applications and uh, initiatives in play. Um, they're looking for some sort of low friction solution that will allow them to easily adapt what they're doing already and, and move it into the, con uh, the creation, uh, conversion, markup and enhancement of content. And once again, to distribute that to multiple devices. Now the reason the market is huge, and I don't expect you guys to read these, but I'll just tell you what this says. Uh, this first one is a uh, report from uh, Kleiner Perkins, and basically they say that soon internet traffic to mobile devices is going to surpass internet traffic to PCs, desktops, things of that nature. Amazing. It also says that uh, sales, of course, we know, smartphones, probably the most uh, ubiquitous uh, device in the world, uh, are still on an upward spiral, while PCs and things of that nature are, are fairly flat. So when we look at who our customers are and what they have, we see that there's a tremendous amount of, of, uh, of uh, devices out there for us to address. We'll talk about something real quick, uh, quickly that uh, I found surprising, and it's uh, the fact that uh, smartphone users, smartphone users are very, very interested in, in content, that they pay for content. Uh, right now, Android is still a little bit ahead of Apple as far as market share. Uh, smartphone users, like I said, pay for content. Uh, it's the preferred device for many people. And I mean the preferred device besides just talking on the phone. It's the preferred device actually to receive content. Smartphone users watch plenty of video. I'd like to know what kind of data plan they're on because I sure as heck can't watch a lot of video without getting a bill that makes my boss call me up and ask what I've done. And, and they're cross-platform users. In other words, they use not just their smartphones, but they use maybe a tablet and a PC as well. So they're multi-user uh, people. So what about tablets? Well, a lot of people I know don't go anywhere without their tablet. Uh, it's become basically their primary computing device. But what we find again is that people are willing to pay for content. People are using con uh, their tablets to view content, to view video, that they uh, pay for content with uh, t over 23% of tablet ads being uh, paid for. Uh, the app market is doubling and probably going to continue to do that. And just like the phone users, these guys are cross-platform consumers. So what that means to us as uh, uh, publishers or someone in the publishing support business is that we better be able to make sure that these customers that buy our content on one source can see it on others, which is a, an interesting problem we're in right now. Something dear to my heart. I was uh, in the publishing business. I worked for, uh, for Elsevier for a number of years. And all we heard about is, can we author this stuff one time and put it on different platforms? And right now, we kind of have a, uh, almost like the format wars of back when I started in the computer business, and there was Radio Shack, and there was Commodore, and there was Apple, and there was IBM, and never the twain shall meet. Well, if you're producing content right now, uh, and it's not EPUB 3, or it's not uh, HTML5, you'll see that you've got a lot of things that you have to sort out. You have to sort out what the output format's going to be, what is that device format going to be? Even on a device, you have to make some decisions as far as fixed layout, reflowable, things of that nature. Authoring once and being able to go to all of the important platforms. And uh, you know, I've, I've added one there at the bottom as far as uh, HTML. 
on the desktop and mobile because uh, HTML5 as a mobile reading platform I think is one of the, uh, well, I won't say a dark horse, but one of the areas that we're going to see some of the biggest gains in, in the future. Back a slide, please. Can we go back a slide? One thing that I really wanted to mention, if you look at the bottom here, when we talk about the people that are producing devices, the people that are producing readers, the people who are controlling the ecosystem, such as Matt was talking about, are starting to take uh, and pay attention to what's going on in EPUB 3, and that they're all starting to creep up on some very good support for the product. They're not there all the way yet, but they're getting there. What's the sense of having this great device if you don't leverage all of the media capabilities? EPUB 3, HTML5 allows you to do all these things that we're talking about and that everyone wants to see. Animation, video, uh, if you're in the, in the educational business, uh, in a chapter exercises, quizzes, we of course can have live links, citations, everything else. Um, we're actually working on a couple now that actually have geolocation as part of the app, as part of the reading material, as part of the book. Believe it or not, embracing something like EPUB 3 in your organization or HTML5 gives you the opportunity to simplify your production activities. Now that sounds kind of counterintuitive, but it gives you a target to shoot at and it gives you a, a well-formed target, and I'll talk about that in a minute so that all of the things that you normally have to do in the production of content, whether it's typesetting, layout, conversion, all of that, can be squeezed together and, and put into a, a different kind of workflow and into our mind, a, a much more uh, uh, economical workflow. Uh, when you're talking about the media and enhanced content, right now you have to go through uh, any number of ways to make sure that your media or enhanced content plays on the various devices. EPUB 3, HTML5 gives you a good framework in order to do that, as well as a way to make sure that something useful appears, which is called graceful degradation, on devices that maybe can't play everything that you can play. Reuse and repurpose your existing content. Well, this is something we know very well in the uh, production industry. Um, we can go from anything you see on the left side of that uh, slide, paper, PDFs, other kinds of digital formats, easily into a, a targeted EPUB or HTML5 application, something that we know very well and something that we're very mature as an industry in doing. Alternate language support. Uh, as a publishing support organization that supports a number of, of the, uh, uh, global publishers, we're finding more and more need and interest in what can we do in languages that don't read left to right. Maybe they read up right to left, up and down, all of these things are available. These attributes are there. You don't have to script it. These things can be controlled within an EPUB or HTML5 uh, application. Accessibility. If you're in the educational business, accessibility is huge. And we're doing a lot of business right now with organizations that are playing catch up as far as making sure that their content is accessible and useful for people who maybe cannot read it totally. Um, EPUB 3, HTML5 gives you very good tools to actually build the accessibility portion of this content into your normal workflow going forward. HTML5, well, um, if you follow some of the discussions that have been going on, it's almost like an either or. And uh, I don't think it is an either or. I mean, right now you get the best, the best of both worlds. You get uh, uh, HTML5 and all the things it can give you, but you get a defined application structure and a defined file structure out of EPUB 3. And the, the little quote there at the bottom is from uh, uh, the head of the IDPF in one of his emails I saw. He says, as EPUB proliferates, there is no reason for the support for that to continue to substantially lag the browser support for HTML5. And I think that's true, and I think we're seeing that in some of the uh, applications we're doing. Like I said, EPUB 3, a structured and complete feature set, agreed, tested, worked out, a lot of people that understand it, all sorts of things that are available right away as far as tools that you can use. I wanted to take a screenshot of their, uh, their, uh, their web page, but of course it didn't look very good. But anyhow, it just gives you an idea of all the things and very deep things that they give you as far as your spec. 
And last but not least, if you're interested in EPUB 3, if you're interested in HTML5, if you're interested in this kind of, of, of application for doing your content, by default, you have thousands of smart people working for you. Not just people in my business who are basically have thousands of people that can produce this for you, but some of the better minds of, of the current uh, uh, state of the future are working on all of these. So there's an assorted developers, vendor community, and tremendous support for EPUB activities. The red light is flashing, the hook's coming out. I want to thank you very much, and uh, we'll go a little bit deeper into this later on. Thank you.